We are two Americans who cross the globe to explore the greatest sports story of the 21st century, the Olympics in China. A global company named Hire caught wind of our mission and supported us on our discovery. We found what we were looking for and much more. This is our tale, most of it true, of how a nation has prepared to stand front and center upon civilization's greatest stage. Beijing! Hey, awesome, we made it. <laughs> so we... No problem. Ooh, what's that grabbing my leg? <laughs> Ooh, wasn't the coastal city of Qingdao set us on the right course to discover the higher and Olympic spirits. But no answer could truly be found unless we investigated the center of it all, Beijing. Here, the possibilities really were endless. Beijing is China's capital. It holds 15 million inhabitants, and it's the main host of the 2008 Olympics. While the city possesses an ancient and fascinating past, it's also transforming into a modern wonder. To put it bluntly, the city is a big deal. The Summer Palace is one big example of what historical Beijing offers. Since this was where we ended up, we decided to search here first. The palace's grounds date back some 800 years, but they took the form you see today in the 18th century thanks to Emperor Qianlong from the Qing Dynasty. From the aptly named Long Corridor, turn up Longevity Hill. The richly decorated Tower of Buddhist Incense sits on the front slope of the 60-meter mountain. You know, I took some uh, geology courses in college and I don't think these rocks were here naturally. In fact, you're right, bro. It took tens of thousands of workers to put this mountain together. Hmm. By hand? By hand. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Not only was the mountain behind me, made by hand, but so is the island and the lake itself. At Emperor Qianlong's orders, the thousands of laborers dug out Kunming Lake to its present size. The leftover soil was used for Longevity Hill and Nanhu Island. What was the purpose of the colossal project, you ask? His mother, of course. It was her birthday present. Man, this place rocks, but I'm glad I'm not the one who had to move all these stones in order to make this island. In the winter, Beijingers use Kunming Lake as an ice rink. In the other seasons, the name of the game is paddle boating. And while the leisure sport isn't an Olympic event per se, we decided to test whether the Chinese truly possess the competitive spirit needed to host an amazing Olympics. We zeroed in on an unsuspecting family across the water. We found a boat that wants to race in the spirit of the Olympics. In the spirit of the Olympics right here. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, E. Hi. We just got whooped at the power racing. Whatever. The Olympic spirit isn't just about winning. No, it's about having fun. It's about having fun and just the spirit of competition. Unlike the Summer Palace, it didn't require 100,000 workers to build what is China's biggest Olympic venue, the Shuni Olympic Rowing and Canoeing Park. However, it did cost a hefty chunk of the 40 billion US dollars Beijing has already spent for the Olympics. Shuni will host the flatwater rowing, canoeing, and kayaking events along its 2,000 meter lake. First one across the finish line wins. Nearby, visitors can watch whitewater kayaking and canoeing. Shuni is the only venue in the world that can host both flat water and slalom events. The man-made river offers two separate channels of whitewater. Athletes must negotiate down the 300 meter courses and pass through the gates. Green gates seem no problem. It's the red ones, the gates that require athletes to paddle up river that separate Olympians from Olympic champions. We liked where this water theme was taking us, so we hightailed it over to Beijing's beach for one last splash. Alright, so Beijing doesn't exactly have a beach, but lovely Chaoyang Park will host the next best thing, the Men's and Women's Olympic Beach Volleyball Tournament. We suspect the Women's Beach Volleyball will be a hit in 2008. Don't ask us why. 
Maybe it's the fun atmosphere. Right now, he is teaching them how to do YMCA. Maybe it's the volleyball girl. Just maybe it's the volunteer cheerleaders. Eh, it's probably a bit of everything. However, we didn't just want to look at the beach, we wanted to be on it. We invited a couple athletes to a friendly match. Okay, check this out. We're gonna play some girls at volleyball. Whatever, we are going to win so fast. I look, they're scared too. Let's go! Yeah! Uh, new volleyball facility. This is unreal. It's like, pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think it's really cool. I think everything's really nice, professional. The people here are great. The sand and nets and everything, as far as playing wise, is really good. It's, um, it's very professional. Who's the uh, tough team in the tournament this year? China. China. I mean, this China. is their home. They've turf. got like yeah. ten teams. They have a here. lot of good teams. They have they have top teams that have a lot of experience playing on the world tour. What do you think about Beijing? Your first time in Beijing. What's your impression? Oh, I think it's going to be awesome. I think they're going to have a blast here. I mean, they're taking a lot of pride in hosting and being a good host. Thank you guys very much sure. for your time. Uh -huh. Thank you. Good luck. Great Thank you. meeting uh -huh. you. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. We'll, be, to we'll be in the crowd cheering for you guys. Oh, okay. good. We'll be there. Yeah. Good, good. Wait, when do you guys play, actually? Uh, tonight at 10 p.m. 10 p.m.? Yeah. 10 p.m.? Okay. The girls won this match, too, although the score was a bit closer. While we still hadn't unlocked the mystery to the spirit of the Olympics and the spirit of higher, we learned another valuable lesson. Sometimes, it's better to just be a fan. Yeah! yeah! Preach it, brother. Hallelujah.